Hey, what's up everyone? I guess this is week four. Um, to recap week three and a minute or less here. Ah, I did not cash. I thought the thought process was spot on. What are the chances that Kenny Galladay and Hawkinson combined for four points? First thing about Galladay, I watched the whole game. Galladay did not seem like he was there. Like, he didn't seem like he was himself. He a couple times did not get his feet in bounds on catches. He dropped passes. Um, after that, Stafford just looked like he didn't want to go to him anymore. Um, and then Hawkinson, <laughs> uh, what would have been his first touchdown catch of the day, uh, he got pushed out of bounds right before he caught the ball. Like, his left uh, outside, like, an inch of his outside foot got, uh, actually stepped out of bounds before he, he caught the ball. And then he dropped two touchdown passes after that. And these were drops in his hands, in his arms, and he comes down and drops it. So, he could have had a three-touchdown day. <laughs> Um, yeah, if, if only, if he catches one or two passes for touchdowns, we, I would have cashed easily. Um, I also feel like everyone that I named for, uh, for a possible GPP play went off. Um, but yeah, I mean, I got a lot of players right. Just the combination of them. I probably went with too many Lions. But then again, they were going against the worst Secondary. Pass, defense, secondary. So, here's what it is. We move on to week four. Uh, oh, we are one and two, which um, I feel like we're going to go off for seven straight weeks. Because last year, I think I finished like 14 and four. And, you know, you always have a rough start at the beginning. So, it's not uncommon. Okay, so for cash lineups, I feel like there's a, a huge recency bias. And I feel like this is what people are going to do. People are going to go, Daniel Jones, playing Washington, he's at home. That's another thing. If you can help it, um, your quarterback plays better home most of the time. But, I mean, unless he's Mahomes, uh, which doesn't matter. So I think people are going to do this. People are going to say, oh, Eckler uh, against the Dolphins. Okay? They're going to say, oh, Keenan Allen. And they're going to be like, oh, okay, I'm going to pair up Danny Dimes with uh, Ingram. Okay, well, um, I'll have to do some more research about this Washington defense. I didn't watch the Bears game, uh, but I know the Bears defense had the most impact of the game. Um, I know Washington's going to be on the road, but I don't think their defense is as bad as how they're playing in the first couple games. So, and this was last year my first impression, my first look as well, right there. I think, though, we get rid of this. I think you can start your whole team off with this, Lee. <laughs> um, against Arizona, who gives up the most points, to the tight end position. I feel like you can go with Mahomes, but um, but the Lions, especially at home, they're going to try to slow the game down with their running game to limit Mahomes' chances. It doesn't mean he can't go off for 30 points. It just means that Detroit is very good at slowing games down. Okay, so with that said... Um, and I think the Browns defense, after watching them play the Rams, I think they might be able to shut um, down this uh, a Ravens offense. Um, they're definitely, I think, more primed to shut down the Ravens running game. I'm not saying Lamar Jack, I mean like Mark Ingram in the running game. Mm -hmm. Oops, I forgot to turn my notifications off. Sorry about that. I think uh, we usually pick between five and 6,000. If we're not going to go with, with Danny Dimes, Kyle Allen on the road, I think 
it could potentially be a shootout if I don't want to play Kyle Allen that much. Not in a cash game. Don't want to play Cousins against the Bears defense. Like, I'm not a huge fan of this five to $6,000 range. Except for maybe Danny Dimes. And I kind of like Danny Dimes a little bit more because Saquon's going to be out. And Danny Dimes can get 30 to 40 y- rushing yards. I'm not going to say he's going to score two rushing touchdowns again. But it's very possible. So I don't have a problem playing with Danny Dimes in the cash game to follow everyone else, which is fine. You'll save money. But I think maybe Russell Wilson you could take a look at it. And I know he had a 44-point game against the Saints, but but that's because they were down. Um, this isn't your like regular, typical Cardinals team either. Kyler Murray is going to be able to score some points. The Cardinals should be able to score 20 points at home on the Seahawks defense, if not more. So the Seahawks, I think, are going to have to score more than 20. They have a, a running game problem. Chris Carson keeps filming the ball, and he's in the doghouse. And Penny hasn't really been that impressive. So Russell Wilson may have to do everything himself in this game. I know they don't want him to do everything himself, but he just might have to. Um, I like Keenan Allen. Um, I would go to um, Lockett here. But, <laughs> again, um, I fell victim to this last week. You don't want to put three or four plays on the same team in case that team doesn't do so hot, especially on the road. So, I think the running back core, though, um, I really like McCaffrey in this game. I feel like it's going to come down between Eckler and McCaffrey, but not both. Um, let's see. We're going to keep Eckler in, though. I think... Also, not also, um, I was going to say because I don't like high-priced quarterbacks, but I think I like the higher-priced quarterbacks rather than the low-priced quarterbacks this week. Um, but also, uh, for the running backs, we usually go with high-priced running backs. Fit as many of them in as you can. Because Dalvin Cook is on the road against the Bears defense, which this is a perfect GPP play this week. People are going to see the Bears' defense and go away from him. Regardless. Especially he's priced higher than he normally is. Dalvin Cook, excellent GPP uh, contrarian pick. Um, let's see. I don't even know how bad the Seahawks run. The run defense is pretty good so far. But David Johnson. Sorry, that's my dogs. They're playing around. Um, I feel like everyone's going to go with Mark Ingram. Because he had to... Just on recency bias. But the Browns will be able to shut down this running game. That's my bold prediction of the week. Um, Derrick Henry. Falcons. The Falcons are at home, so they might be up all game. Unless Henry can miraculously catch five balls out of the backfield. I don't like that play. I'm re- really interested in about this Marlon Mack play. I feel like he's going to go off. I know he went off for 17 points. Or 16.8. I feel like he's going to get over 25 points against the Raiders. They should be favorites. Home favorites. Running. He's going to catch four passes. Three passes, maybe. At the backfield. I really like that modern Mac play. All right. Um, so I think the third running back will be more of a value pick. And uh, I'm not sure how, if you hear my dogs playing uh, in the next room, but, but they're okay. They like to play, yeah, they like to rough house with each other. Um, I'm a big Carry On Johnson fan this week. Didn't do so high against the Eagles. The Eagles have a tremendous um, run defense. The Chiefs do not. Yeah, you might say the Lions will be down. But he'll catch passes out of the backfield. Uh, they have, what's his name, Bryce Johnson. He's good. He's not going to spell carry on Johnson. Bryce Johnson's like the third down back. But not every possession he'll be the third down back. Like they were throwing like wide receiver screens to Bryce Johnson against the Eagles. So I think carry on Johnson. So the only problem is you just don't know how many touches he'll get. Between like 16 and 20. He needs more than that. I think they slow this game down, and he's 
good for 15 to 20 points. As long as it gets 15 points, you'll make um, a good return on uh, this cash lineup. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take a look at other running backs this week. But I think either Eckler, McCaffrey, and then Marlon Mack, and then on Johnson. And I don't think too many people will have on Johnson. Not that it matters in cash, but I think he will be the big difference maker in your lineups. All right, so defense. I'm not going to talk about defense. That's how we're going to make our lineups different. Uh, the rest of the receivers, I just want to, at this point, I just want to name off some receivers. You know, people are recently biased go to Mike Evans, but this Rams secondary is not like their last year's secondary. This Rams secondary is special. This the whole defense is is more special. They might give up a lot of yards in the first or two positions of the game, but then after that, they shut teams down. Um, so let's look at uh, Cooper Cup always in play, but also for the Rams. Um, I feel like it's a better GPP play because you just don't know who golf is going to go to. He yes, Cooper Cup is his favorite target. But what if the bucket if the Buccaneers double team Cup, he's just going to go to Brandon Cooks and Robert Woods. Robert Woods didn't have that great of a game on Sunday, on Sunday night. Cooks and Cup did. Uh, Woods and Everett might have great games. You know, you just don't know. I like Tyler Lockett, but I think since we have Keenan Allen, you can't play both. And um, I'll probably end up doing a Seahawks GPP stack, which makes m most sense. Just gonna go Kenny Galladay. <laughs> Uh, GPP play, like, and with me too, if, 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 if my picks that don't work out, uh, that particular week, I am, I'm, I'm usually a week too early. So Gal, Galladay should go off for 25 points this week. I think everyone's going to go to Stone and Shepard, but again, he's going to be, Josh Norman's going to cover him. I don't know. Actually, no, he's a slot receiver now. I don't know. I just have to look at, um, uh, Washington's, uh, secondary and their stats um let's see let's keep going down Fitzgerald might be a great play for cash um let's see don't really want to play uh dj shark against the broncos there's a lot of oh yeah who knew that emmanuel stand uh, who knew that the packers could zero in on a receiver and shut him down for the week uh, Emmanuel Sanders, perfect GPP bounce back play. Man, if you just, for this week, I might just put a GPP team in there of guys that just sucked last week in week three and watch most of those guys will go off because good players rarely have back-to-back -back down weeks. It could happen, but not likely. I love Curtis Samuel for this game against the Texans. Like I said, I'm not really into Kyle Allen yet, but um, I do like McCaffrey and Samuel. Or just, I'll probably just play, end up playing one of them, not both in the same game, um, just in case. But I really like Curtis Samuel. Uh, t Terry McLaurin, man. What's not to like about this guy? First of all, he's going against the Giants. It doesn't matter. He scores touchdowns. He might have a two-touchdown game. Look at the targets. The targets is, is the volume you want for cash. Um, for GPP, though, I think the only I think everyone's going to have him for GPP unless you pair him up with Keenum. Which, who's going to have Keenum, you know? So, for cash, though, he's a must-play. He's so cheap. He should be in the 5,000s by now. Look at that. But... They didn't have time to react after last Monday night's game. Because I think they came out on Sunday night. Uh, so we got to go way down here for uh, some more receivers. Let's see. I, I forget who I'm playing at <laughs> the last receiver spot. So um, let's, I'm just going to scroll down, guys. Sorry if, uh, if it's not too interesting right now. I know there's should be a good play down here. Slayton is an interesting play. I don't think you can play him in cash, but a good GPP sleeper to save on salary. Like, 
Ooh, if you had your Danny Dimes and instead of going Shepard or Ingram, you go like one of them and then Darius Slayton. So Danny Dimes, Ingram, and Darius Slayton might be the play for GPP. Yeah, I don't think you want to go way down here. Um, there's not too many cheap, cheap receivers that you want to go to on cash this week. What's Benny Fowler doing? Not much. Rat, uh, no, not Ratley. No, Malik Seahawks can just turn a lot of receivers. Preston Williams, maybe. It's a solid 10 points. Save salary. Go Preston, Preston Williams. And uh, that's what's, what's Mohamed Sanu doing. Sanu might be a interesting get at home, but they have too many options ahead of him. Pascal, not so much. Courtney Sutton, mm, not so much. Dorsett, I had him on a good... He has 3,400 last week, and I pivoted off of Aguilar for Dorsett. And not bad, 18 points. But the Bills are extremely talented in their secondary. Um, DK Metcalf might be interesting in bounce back opportunity. More of a GPP. So yeah, this is just where I am right now. Um, don't really have a full lineup for you. It depends. If you have like Danny Dimes and then McCaffrey instead of Eckler and Russell Wilson and whatnot, but then you have to pay up for Ingram. So I really like this will this lead to Russell Wilson combination. I think I'm going to keep this that those two players for cash pretty much. Unless, um, but anyways, like, yeah, any, like the Cardinals will be a team you will always want to have players, um, for that week. And I think everyone's going to go for Danny Dimes and Danny Dimes is not <laughs> like, he's not like a hall of fame player yet. Washington, I don't think is that much of a slouch on defense, like the Giants, or the Cardinals are. So this is where I'm going so far. Call it what, like a second or third impression. Um, or second, third look so far. And uh, that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much. Please consider subscribing. Hit, hitting that like button. And comment below. Definitely comment below and tell me who you like so far. Alright guys. Um, have a good one. Um, I'll see you in a couple days for my final look. Adios.